Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sam and I make videos about working in tech and how to start your career as an instructional designer. If you've seen one of my previous videos, the how to build your portfolio with Google Sites, this video is gonna be a follow-up to that. In this video, we're actually gonna build a portfolio project that you can include in your portfolio. For today's portfolio project, we're gonna be building a mini course. And the mini course is gonna be called how to build your portfolio. So a recruiter can click on this mini course and they can see your work. If you have an idea for a mini course that you wanna build, now's a great time to just build alongside me and then have a mini course ready to be put into your portfolio. So in our mini course today called Build Your Portfolio, we are gonna have three modules. The first module is going to be called Build Your Portfolio Structure. The second module is gonna be called Write Your About Me section. And the third module is gonna be called Create Your First Portfolio Project. I'll kind of give you a bit of insight into what I'm including in each module as well as why I'm including different modalities, whether it's like text or video within this mini course. And at the end, we'll have a mini course embedded in the portfolio site that we've built. So if that sounds good to you and you're ready to get building, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below and let's get into it. Alrighty, so like I said before, this is the portfolio site that we built in the previous video. There was an about me section, portfolio projects, and today we're gonna be building out the first portfolio project that you can actually include on your portfolio site. You can also see that the portfolio project is going to be linked in the nav bar. So let's go ahead and go to the main portfolio page. This is the project page that we made in the previous video. I'll go ahead and add the title of the course. It's called build your portfolio. And I will also, you know, add the heading. Then I'll go ahead and change the name of the page just so that it's a little bit easier for me to see what I'm working on because I do have two portfolio projects. All right, so then we're gonna fill in the problem statement and the project description. I like having these on the front page of my mini courses or really any portfolio project just because I like to show the recruiter what problem I'm trying to solve as well as what the project will be about. I've pre-written all of my answers and all of the course content in a separate Google Doc just so that it's easy for me to edit in the Google Doc and then copy and paste it from the Google Doc into my actual portfolio. I like this because Google Doc has like the extension Grammarly which you can use to check for spelling and grammar mistakes. So in the previous video I just added three modules but now I'm going to actually go ahead and put in the actual names of the modules. Module one is going to be create your portfolio structure using Google Sites, and it's already linked, so I don't need to add the page. Then I'll go ahead and update the name of module two, which is write your about me section. Then I'll go ahead and update the third module, and this one is called build your first portfolio project. And I'll really quickly just go ahead and change the name of the module pages just so that they have a little bit more detail. It's the name of each module so that if someone looks at the pages in the drop down nav bar, they'll know exactly what they're seeing. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and build out module one of our Build Your Portfolio mini course. You've seen this structure, like I said, in the previous video. And now let's add some content. To start, I'll go ahead and add in an introduction, and I like to have an introduction heading here. And then in the introduction text below, I'm gonna include a bit of background information and context, what Google Sites is, give the learner a bit of insight into what we'll be building, what type of portfolio structure we'll be building, why it's important to have a portfolio, etc. I like adding intro text just because sometimes it's a little bit jarring for a learner to kind of jump right into like an activity or a video. So I do have a little bit of introduction text and then I'll go ahead and add a video. The reason that I'm having a video as well is because the first module is called create your portfolio structure using Google sites. And because I'm going to be using the Google sites interface, I do like having a video for this. Now I could definitely have taken screenshots, and labeled them and did like a step-by-step -step build your portfolio structure using Google Sites. 
but I do think that there is something nice about having a video walkthrough. So that will be the next thing that I have in this course, or sorry, in this module. We'll start with the intro text, then we'll have a video on how to build this portfolio structure with Google Sites. I will embed a video, and the video is actually my previous video because I created a video about how to build a portfolio structure with Google Sites. So I will have that there so that the learner can watch it. Then I'll just go ahead and format it a little bit. Once I do like a final edit, I'll go ahead and fix this a little bit. But you can see that the module one is starting to come along. I have an introduction with some text that gives a bit of insight about Google Sites. Then I have the video which actually walks the learner through it. And now I'm gonna add one of my favorite things which is like a you try or a your turn where I actually give the learner some step-by-step -step instructions where they can actually try what they saw in the video on their own. This kind of follows the like I do, we do, you do sort of structure. I just think this is nice to have um, in a course because learners can always refer back to either the video itself or they can just follow the step-by-step -step instructions below. So each step is going to be exactly what I did in the video so the learner can reference either of those as they build out their portfolio. Lastly, in module one, I do want to add buttons. So like going forward buttons and going back buttons, because this is going to make it easier for the learner to navigate between modules. So I'll include a module or sorry, a button to module two, and it will link to that page module two. And I will also put like a back button, which I'll call, I think, build your course, no build your portfolio homepage. And then I will go ahead and link that to the homepage just so that it's easy to navigate. They can just click back and forth, kind of like a real course that you'd see built in like a Udemy or an edX. You know, you can go module by module and easily navigate back and forth. So that was module one. Now let's go ahead and build out module two, which is called write your about me section. Just like in the previous module, I am gonna include an introduction heading and I will give a bit of context in the form of an introduction text. In this module, I'm gonna give a bit of information about, or in my introduction, about what an About Me section is, why it's important, things to include. Then I will probably below that include some examples of About Me sections. I think, you know, when it comes to doing like a writing module, it's good to have good and bad examples so that um, the learner can kind of do error analysis or kind of view what a good example is versus what a bad example is so you can actually see it in action. So I'm going to be using this collapsible group. I think this should maybe work where it's kind of like a drop down and I think the examples can go within the drop down so that if they click that down arrow, it'll kind of reveal itself. I don't know, could be fun. Let's try it. Alrighty, that looks good. Let's go ahead and add a good example just so that the learner can then contrast against what a good example of an about me section is. I think this will be useful. You know, it's just nice to have some examples and some references. All right, so we have a description of like what an about me section is, what you should include in an about me section, as well as a few examples. And so now we'll go ahead and add another one of those your turn slash try it yourself where I'm gonna ask a few questions that they can you know, think about or answer while they're writing their about me section. Alrighty, so that's it for module two. One thing that I really like about Google Sites is you can actually just preview it to kind of see what that looks like. So I'll click preview, and this will give me like the full screen version of what it will look like live. You can see the introduction, the bad example, drop down, the good example, that looks nice. I might, you know, adjust the spacing once I get towards the editing stage of this, but I mean, I think all the content looks good. So then again, like with the previous module, 
I'll go ahead and add in the navigation buttons so that the learners can either go forward to the next module or back to the previous. And once this is all done, then we will go ahead and move on to the final module, module three. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and click on module three. This is gonna be the last module called Build Your First Portfolio Project. And like the previous two modules, I'll make sure that I add an introduction heading and some introduction text to give context about what the portfolio project is, a bit about the different types of portfolio projects that you could build, a little definition about each of those types of portfolio projects, like a job aid or a blog post, or even a mini course like the one we're building. And then I'll go ahead and actually do a video about how to build that first project. And because for this example, we'll be doing a job aid, I'll just kind of show them how to build a job aid using Google Docs. Ooh, at the last minute, I think it'd be fun to add in a few portfolio project ideas. I think, you know, sometimes if someone's trying to take a course on how to build a portfolio, having some portfolio project ideas could be nice. So I'll leave space where eventually when I go back and edit, I can add in a few portfolio project ideas. And now I'll go ahead and include the video where I teach the learner how to build their first, por their first portfolio project, which in this case will be a job aid, you know, that I build in Google Docs. The job aid specifically is how to build an email template in Gmail. I think this is a really good um, example of a use case for a job aid. And so if you're not familiar, a job aid is kind of like a cheat sheet or like a step-by-step -step cheat sheet that the audience can download and you know use on the job. It's not like a super extensive sort of training that needs to be done. It's just like a one-off action that they might need to do in their jobs that they can keep on hand and it's easy to access. All right, so I've added the video on how to build that job aid using Google Docs. And now last but not least, we'll probably include a your turn where they build their first portfolio project. I'll give them like a step-by-step -step kind of breakdown about how I went about building my portfolio project, which was the job aid, and give them those steps so that they can take and kind of build alongside as they watch the video, but you know, for their own personal project idea. And just as with the previous uh, modules, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly go ahead and just add in the buttons so that it's easy to navigate both to the previous module and for this, because it is the last module, I'll want to make sure that the forward button will actually bring them to the portfolio homepage, or sorry, the project homepage, which was like page one of the portfolio project that had like the introduction and all of that. And let's go ahead and preview that really quickly. That looks nice, the intro looks good. The portfolio projects idea looks okay. Not the biggest fan. I want something to maybe differentiate it so it doesn't look exactly like the intro, or sorry, the heading for the portfolio projects. So I don't know, I think maybe eventually I'll go back and play around with it. Maybe not in this video, but um, no, that's not it. All right, we're just going to skip over that and I will deal with that later. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Um, oh wait, no, not this page. We want to go back to, oops, we want to go back to portfolio page. All right, so here are, you could see I totally forgot to add the button that would allow them to navigate to the first module of the course. So I'll go ahead and just add that really quickly. And you can kind of see how this whole thing is now kind of coming together. So it looks like a course and functions like a course. You can see that the portfolio project has a title, all of that's there. When the learner or when, you know, the recruiter really clicks on any of those pages in the dropdown, it'll bring them to their, to the respective module page. Now I'm just going through and kind of seeing, you know, I don't like the heading here where it says project one mini course. I don't know, it seems a little lengthy, so I'm just gonna play around with this. 
This isn't necessary because we've actually already built our whole mini course. We've built all the modules. But now we're going to go ahead and make sure that everything is linked and that this portfolio project section is now all set up to map to our mini project or sorry, our mini course that we just built. Okay, so we've linked out the project, we've changed the name, and let's go ahead and just make sure that we have like a short description. We've already written it there in the project homepage, so I can just actually copy and paste that. And we'll go ahead and paste that. Okay, that looks way too long, so I'll go ahead and just trim it up and kind of format a little bit. Go ahead and get rid of that sentence. This probably only needs to be one sentence, and I'll probably change the font size just so it fits nicely. But yeah, let's go ahead and just kind of make sure that this looks nice. Perfect, let's go ahead and preview this. So here's the mini course. Perfect, it links right to the project homepage, mini course called Build Your Portfolio. Let's go ahead and click on the first button. That looks good. Module one. I'll probably add the actual name of the module here at the heading because if they just click module one, they don't, there's nowhere they can really see what the module is called. So I should probably fix that. And then I'll just go ahead and do that with the other modules. This is just honestly the kind of editing that I do normally in my day job. And so I just am kind of applying it here. You want to make sure everything looks consistent and you want to make sure everything looks and feels really great to the learner. Like for you, because you're creating the content, you know what module three is. But if you're a learner who's taking this course for the first time, you're not going to know or remember what module one is. And you really don't want to have your learner have to go and like, hover over the nav bar to figure out what module one is and what will be in module one. All right, so this looks pretty good. I will probably deal with spacing and like minor things at a later time. All right, module two, this looks nice. I'll do some editing later, but the examples look good. I like that, I think that's nice. And then module three, that looks good. Let's go ahead and see. Ugh, that portfolio projects thing will need to change, but the video looks good. The your turn looks good. All right. And all the buttons work. So that's awesome. So yeah, that's how you would build like a mini course or a portfolio project mini course. Now you can either repeat this process or build out another type of portfolio project and link it into your portfolio. Alrighty y'all, I hope you found that helpful. I want you to know that you can create your own mini course with any topic that you find interesting or that you have existing knowledge about. Just follow the same steps. And if you need a little bit more assistance in creating your online course, go ahead and check out my book, Create Your Online Course, a step-by-step -step workbook. This book really breaks down the how of writing each part of the online course. Because, you know, you saw in the video, I was basically copying and pasting from content that I had already written. And so this book will actually help you write the content for yourself. It gives you all the information you need on how to write effective course content and organize your course in an effective way. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.